Welcome to the City Light Church. We are so happy to have you worshiping with us on the first Sunday of the month. We've made it. You know, we are so happy that God is, is with us and that God's presence. We thank God for the theme of this month. This is September, and our theme is activated. Amen? Amen. And so we thank God that God continues to be activated. Today, we are moving forward with activated scene two, activating your call. And when I think about being activated, I think about moving forward. This season is transitions. We see the beauty of nature, but also God is being activated in our lives. Our lives, we're moving forward. We're going forward out of COVID where God is restoring us. So I thank God for what he is doing and what he will do in this worship service. Praise God. It's still a God show in this 2020. And we invite you to first come and worship with us. Then we're going to look at pictures of the week where we get to see what God is doing through this powerful ministry. After pictures of the week, we hear a message about activating your call from our very own Pastor Lan. After the message, we'll take the uh, communion for the first of the month, tithes and offering, and then we'll have our family vision song. You know, I just can't wait. Do you know what your call is? I believe so. You know what? I can't wait to hear the word. I will see what God means when he says activating my call. Let's go do it. Awesome. We'll see you later. God bless. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Happy new month. Welcome to the month of September. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for his blessings and his protection. I pray that it will be a month filled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise. 
Oh 
Hello, I'm Shay Balagun and I'm a member of the discipleship team at our church, the City Light Church. I'd like to invite you to Grow Track. The Grow Track is a simple system that we implement in the discipleship team to help people discover their God given purpose. Specifically, the Grow Track is a sequence of three classes that are designed to help you learn about the City Light Church, to learn about yourself, in particular, your unique personality and spiritual gifts, and what it means to make a difference, and how to make a difference by serving in one of our Dream Team departments. So I welcome you to Grow Track. The Grow Track happens in three uh, classes. These classes can be taken in whatever sequence that meets your schedule. There's a Grow Track class once a week uh, in a month and at the end of these classes you'll be ready to join one of our dream team departments and to make a difference both in our church as well as in your local communities hello my name is maxwell okute i am one of the teachers of the growth track department i um, joined this department about four years ago after successfully completing these um, the growth track processes as a student um, and I was glad to confirm my, both my spiritual and vocational gift, um, out of which uh, was the gift of teaching. 
and that is why I'm teaching in the growth track department, teaching new people coming, going through this process. Um, so if you've not um, attended this, um, you've not gone through the growth track department, this is both for um, new members of the church and also old members that have not gone through the process to become an official member of um, Satellite Church. Um, please expect a text message from us um, or a phone call to uh, confirm your availability on um, the next time uh, the grow track is going to be taking place. Uh, this could be at any time and at also at the convenience of your home, right? So thank you very much and um, see you soon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another powerful worship service of the City Light Church. Powerful praise and worship by City Praise, powerful introduction by our hosts for today. I'm sure you are prepped for something amazing, something great. This is the first Sunday of the month of September. Wow. We are in September 2020. What a year it has been. It's been a wild ride, but in the midst of that wild ride, God has been fulfilling his prophecy, his promise towards us that this year is his show. Listen, I'm looking forward to December 31st when we're going to gather together and then we're going to be sharing about what God did this year. And I just want to prophesy over everybody that is watching me right now that you are going to make it till the end of 2020 and beyond 2020. God is going to preserve your life and preserve the life of your family. I know there's a lot of things going on. Oh, this number of people are going to die and all that. But I want you to know that you are divinely exempted. You are covered by God's power. The blood of Jesus Christ, the Passover lamb, is over you. The covenant of God is over you. You know, I was thinking... You know, um, just looking back at this year, and I remember in the month of uh, is it what, the month of January or February, I taught a message titled "The Resilient Company," and I I did a message on long life. You know, I was talking about long life, talking about you know how God keeps us and how God protects us and how the angels walk and all that. In the month of February, when the year was starting, it was just some you know some days ago. I was thinking, I was like, wow, I didn't even know this how this year was gonna go. But God led us to start teaching about long life and protection at the beginning of this year. And I want to thank God because God has preserved us, God has kept us, and God will continue to keep you and continue to keep your family. I am so, so, so excited to announce to you today that uh, this is my uh, final, um, you, know, you, know, you know, this is, this is the, the last uh, message that we're going to be doing this way. We are going to be live, live right here in church on Sunday from next Sunday, September 13. So we're going to have people in the auditorium. We're going to be broadcasting live uh, where, you know, the, the information is going to go out to you on how you can register to be a part of the service. And those who are not yet able to join us, you know, for one reason or the other, we're still going to be broadcasting to you so you can still watch us from wherever you are at home or at work. But some people are just eager to get into church. And, you know, I'm also eager to get back into church and enjoy some live worship, you know. And, you know, you know while, you know, you know, adhering to all the, dis all, all the uh, safety measures that the state has recommended, uh, you know, that, you know, we, you know we, we've been preparing for social distancing, wearing of masks, checking of temperatures, and doing all that. So we're going to be doing all that, and, but we're going to have fun. We're going to be back in church. So please spread the word. The City Light Church is starting live services again September 13 at 11 a.m. And we'll get you more information on how the services are going to go. That there's a limited number of people that can be in the service. So we'll let you know the services, how they are all going to go, whether it's going to be one or two or three. I will let you know during the week. But so excited to be able to bring the word of God to you today on this first Sunday of the month of right, September. Please. You can all still reach us anytime. Reach us on the contacts that are showing on the screen. You can call us, message us, 
However, and if you, as you are watching this thing also, you can interact with us. You can post in the chat. You know, you can, you can you know, talk about how this message is impacting you. You can share things. And also on the social media page that you are watching this thing, if you go to the, to the post where this, thing, where this video is showing, uh, you will be able to see uh, you know, uh, two, I mean, a form in there that leads to our connection card. The connection card, we want to welcome those who are joining us for the first time those who are joining us from anywhere for the first time in our services, or those who intend to, to know a little, a little bit more about us or get to know us more, you can just fill that, uh, click that link and fill that contact form, their very short contact form, and then our team is going to reach out to you, and we, we want to be involved in your life. We want to get involved with you in your spiritual work. We believe that God is going to use this church. The, which, the vision of the church is to raise a company of light, to raise people who know God, who love people, who discover their purpose, who are making a difference in the world, and who are walking in the freedom that Christ bought for us on the cross of Calvary. We want, to get in, we want you to get into the community, a community of people uh, that, you know, that helps you to be able to fulfill your purpose on the earth and let, helps you to live a fulfilling life on the earth. So you are welcome. Our doors are open. Join us as we open physically. Join us as we, um, as we open uh, I mean, I mean, online also. Uh, God, God bless you. And I look forward to, you know, to getting to know you more. Thank you very much uh, for joining us for this service. So I'm going to be moving right ahead to my message for today. So the theme for the year for the City Light Church is it's a God show. It's a God show from John chapter 20 from verse 20. It's a God show. You know, the, in verse 19, the disciples were locked up in fear uh, because of the Pharisees. And Jesus appeared to them in John chapter 20 verse 19. Jesus appeared to them and he told them, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. And then he went on in verse 20. He showed them, John 20, 20. He showed them the, you know, his hand. He showed them, you know, his side. And the Bible says that the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. They were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. So in the midst of the lockdown, in the midst of the fear, in the midst of all the things going on in the world, God, Jesus Christ, is showing us his hand. is showing us his side. And that's what we have been seeing this year. Even though they have been locked down, Jesus has been showing us himself and the God show has been going on. So I declare over you again, it's a God show. As we begin the last four months of the year, it's a God show for you. Everything that God has packaged and planned in his show for you is coming to pass in your life. You are walking in that God show even until the conclusion of this year in the precious name of Jesus. Now, the theme for this month, uh, the month of September, is a continuation of our theme for last month. So our theme for last month is activated. No, so we're, we're going into activated scene two. Activated scene two. So we've been studying the, books, the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And, you know, we've looked into the first part of the, uh, of the book of the Acts of the Apostles that dealt with how the church started and how, you know, the church went to the Gentiles. Now we are moving to the second part of the Acts of the Apostles, which deals with the missionary travels of Paul, Barnabas, and his companion, and how the gospel spread to the old world. So we're switching act. And just like we're switching act, just like in a show, we're switching act into act two right now. I'm saying that in your own life, too, right now, there's a switch of act in your life. The, the, the first part of this year, first part of this year was an act. But God is now moving into another act in this God show in your life. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you are shifting, you are, you are moving. And you are not moving backwards, you are not moving downwards, you are moving forward. You are moving forward in God's plans. God is switching the season into a season of joy, into a season of celebration. Morning is stopping in your life. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now that if there was anything, any kind of darkness that prevailed in sin one, I'm declaring in the name of Jesus Christ that in sin two, light is shining in every aspect of your life. I declare that sin two is a season of abundance, is a season of greater grace. It's a season of great vision. It's a season of revelation. It's a season of divine orchestration. It's a season of God moving in his show in your life in a new dimension. I want you to say amen to these words because I'm 
prophesying over you by the Spirit of God. That is a shift of season. That's a shift of season. Maybe sin one was characterized by fear. Now you are moving into your season of boldness. Maybe sin one was characterized by losses. Now you are moving into your season of restoration. Maybe sin one was char char characterized by sickness. Now you are moving into your season of health. Maybe sin, sin one was char characterized by lack. Now you are moving into a season of abundance. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ right now, there's a season, there's a sin two. There's a sin two in your relationship. A sin two in your marriage. A sin two in your destiny. A sin two in working in your divine purpose. There's a shift that is taking place. You are activating your gift. You are activating your healing. You are activating your goal. You are activating the spirit of God that is inside of you. You are moving into a new season right now. It's a new act of God. I want you to declare to yourself or to everybody, that anybody that is watching with you right now and say it is act two in my life. It is act two in my life. It's a new act of God in this God show. It's a, sh it's a shift that is taking place right now in this God show. I'm moving to the next act of the God show in the precious name of Jesus. Come on, type it, type it, type it. Type it into the comments right now. Say it is sin two for me right now. It is act two for me right now. It is act two for me right now. Say I'm shifting. Right there, say I'm shifting. I'm shifting. I'm changing. I'm changing. I'm advancing. I'm moving to a new flow. I'm moving to a new flow. Come on, type it in there. Type it in there. As you declare it, you are declaring it prophetically. And I'm standing in agreement with you as we type that thing in there. That is indeed a shift for you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So we're going to be, today we're going to continue our study of the book of Acts. We're going to be taking a message today from Acts chapter 13. And the title of my message for today is Activate Your Call. Activate Your Call. Activate Your Call. Your Call. Your Call. You see, every one of us has an assignment from God. We have an assignment from God. We have a call from God. So there's the call of God when God calls us to know him, uh, to become his child, to become a part of his kingdom. But then within that call, there's a call of God for us to serve him. There's an assignment that God gives us to fulfill on the earth. You have one. I have one. We are all in the process of fulfilling that call. So, so I want to speak to you today about that call because it is important for you to know that the call of God over your life requires activation. Your assignment requires activation. There are a lot of people right now who have a call from God, but they are dormant, they are inactive based on that call. They are inactive. Now, another thing about the call of God is that it is activated in phases. So you can start in one phase, activated, and then God activates another phase of his call over your life, as we're going to see in the life of the people that we're going to be studying, the characters we're going to be studying today. God will activate another phase in your life. So maybe you have been working in your call for 10 years, 50 years, 40 years, 2 years, 2 months, or 3 months. Maybe you've been working in it, but I want to let you know that there are different phases and different dimensions of the call of God upon your life that needs to be constantly activated. And the message the Holy Spirit brought to me, uh, you know, to, to speak to you today is that he is activating the call in the heart of his people. He's activating new faces. He's activating new dimensions. He's activating people who have never really stepped into that call. He's activating you for you to step into your call. So today I want to share with you the conditions that are, that are necessary for the activation of your call. You know, there are several conditions that we can see in, the, in Acts chapter 13, and I'm going to quickly go through these seven conditions of how to activate your call, and I'm trusting God that these conditions will begin to operate in your life. As you listen to this word, I want you to say, okay, number one, let me see, do I have this condition in place? Number two, do I have this condition in place? You know, you know, you know certain things require certain conditions for them to be activated, right? Certain things require certain conditions for them to be activated. So, for example, if you... If you have a, if, you know, if a chicken lays the egg, lays the egg, and then just leaves the egg there, the egg will never become a, a chick. The chicken has to go and sit on the egg once in a while, sit on it to incubate it. There's a particular kind of temperature, a, you know, set of conditions that must be there before, before that life can be fully activated. 
You know, I remember watching a show one time that's coming to my mind, you know, called Gremlin. It was a movie. I actually read the book, you know, when I was young, but, I, you know, they made it into a movie. It was called Gremlins. And these Gremlins, they were inactivated. But for them to be activated, there are some things you must not do. You must not feed them after midnight. You must not pour water on them, you know, and all that. Once you pour water on them or feed them after midnight, they just get activated and become these ugly monsters causing problems. But what I want to tell you is that there are certain things, set, I mean, your call requires certain conditions for it to be activated. And Acts chapter 13 tells us this condition. So what you just need to do is to check it and say, do I have this condition in my life? I can tell you, when you have these conditions in your life, you will fulfill your call. You will advance in your call. You will activate your call. And you will activate different phases of your call when it is necessary, when you have this condition in place. But if any of these conditions, they are missing, you will discover that you might, have yourself, you might find yourself being delayed in one phase, or you might find yourself not even activating that call at all. So my prayer for you today is that that call, that next level, that thing, that assignment of God for your life, that unique assignment of God for your life that you're going to give account to God for, that it is activated in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is activated that the conditions are present in your life. The conditions are present in your life in the name of Jesus. So let's go and look at it. So Acts chapter 13, starting from uh, verse 1. Acts chapter 13, starting from verse 1. So my first point today is, you know, the first condition for the activation of your call is what I call the communion of the saints. The communion of the saints. The communion of the saints, or the congregation of the saints. You just want to know the communion of the saints, or the congregation of the saints. Let's look at Acts chapter 13 from verse 1. It says, Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. So look at that. Now in the church there, Sorry, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, and it goes on to mention these people. Now, this is a gathering. You know, when you see the word church there, the word church there is from the word ecclesia, which has to do with gathering. It has to do with gathering. Now, there's a, there's, there's a, uh, the, 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 the people, right, the people of God were gathered there, and now they were, they, they were having communion. They were having fellowship. They were congregating. And listen, as I was reading this thing, the Spirit of God just, you know, put this thing in my heart and, you know, to speak to it that the first condition for the fulfillment of your call is that you need to find your company. You need to find your company. You need to find your church. You need to find your people. You need to find the, your tribe. Yeah, let me use that word. You need to find your tribe. Your calling gets activated when you are in the tribe that God has ordained you to be a part of. God begins to build you up in that calling when you become a part of the tribe that he has called you to be a part, from, a part of. I want you to know that you have been called to be part of a tribe. When I talk about a tribe, I'm talking about, first of all, the big tribe with a T. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ, the universal church of Jesus Christ. And how you become a member of the universal church of Jesus Christ is by giving your heart to Jesus, accepting, accepting, me, accepting him as your Lord and Savior and coming into a relationship with him. The moment you do that, you are baptized into the body of Christ. You become a member of the body of Christ. But that's not where it stops. Because God, being very wise, knowing that the church, the universal church, is wide and is all over the world and is different, all kinds of configurations, you know, black, or white, and, you know, all kinds, you know, small, large, mega, you know, house groups and all kinds of things in different places. Some of them may never get to even interact together physically while they are here on the earth because of distance, because of time, because of certain kinds of separation. So what, the, what God did was that God created a small tea tribe, some small tea tribes in the midst of the big tea tribe in different places so that every member of the body of Christ can actually find a place where they can go to, where they can be known and where they can be useful, where they can be known. That's very important, where you can be known and then also where you can be useful, where you can be useful, where you can serve, where you can be noticed. 
and where you can also contribute, where you can contribute. God puts you in there. For those of you that are members of City Light watching me right now, your tribe is the City Light Church. That's the place where you are known. And that's the place also where you are able to contribute. That's the place where you are able to serve. That's the place where if something is going on in your life, you can reach out to somebody, they can intercede for you, or you can listen to the word of God that is specifically tailored for this church, that's specific tailored for your family, tailored for yourself. Not that you can't listen to other people, you can listen to other people, but God puts us in these congregations so that, you know, based on his own divine plan, you know, and you know, it's work in different phases of our lives so that what we need at that time in our call can come into our lives. So Paul and Barnabas were planted in this church. These people, they were in this church at Antioch at that particular time, and God was using that to activate their call. You see, I want you to ask yourself this important question. First of all, ask yourself, you are watching me, where is my tribe? Maybe you are one of those people, you go from place to place and all that. You know, you know I, I'm, not going, I'm not condemning everybody, but you need to know that you need to be planted in a local church. You've got to be planted in a local church. You've got to be a tree planted, a, a tree planted that flourishes in the house of God. You've got to find a place where you can be known. You've got to find a place where you can be useful, where you can contribute, where you can serve. You've got to find that place and connect with that place. That is the beginning of the incubation of your call. That is the beginning of the activation of your call. You see, I received the call of God, you know, when I was a very young child. When I was very young, when I was about, about 16, was when I received the call of God, you know, that I'm fulfilling right now, of pro proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. But listen, I'll tell you that that call will have failed if I had not found a company of people and found companies of people over time, over the, the last 30 years or 31 years since I have, you know, uh, given my life to Jesus Christ and became a part of, you know, be, 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 I mean, be, be, became a part of this call. 30 years of working in the call, 31 years of, you know, giving, Jesus, giving my life to Jesus Christ. If it had not been for, you know, different, different tribes that God has put me, and no, God put me in one tribe, he taught me about consecration, taught me about evangelism, taught me, taught me about heaven, taught me, and then God moved me, moved me to another tribe where I learned about faith, where I learned about my righteousness, about who I was in Christ, and God, you know, kept on moving to learn about the Holy Spirit, to learn about different things, and at different times, God places you in a particular tribe. And in that tribe, God does certain work in your life. You see, over my lifetime, I've not switched church so many times, you know, just, just a few times, you know, I, at the beginning, and then I was in the church for about 12 years, and then the next thing, you know, I'm in this church, you know, this, I'm in, in this church right now, you know, for, se for several years or so. God plants you somewhere so that you are rooted, so that your call can flourish, so that your call can be activated. I want you to ask yourself, where is my tribe? Where is my tribe? You need to make a decision. If you, don't have, if you are not a part of a local church, make a decision to join a local church. Look for one that God will lead you to. If you are not, you are welcome to City Light, you know, to join us at the City Light Church. If you don't have any place to go, this is a company of people that will help you fulfill your call, that will help you fulfill your assignment. And if you're a member of the church, you need to make sure you maximize your company. You need to maximize your company. Listen, you don't fulfill your call by staying separate, by staying away, or by, or by trying to do it on your own. No, you don't fulfill your call. One is too small a number to, to achieve significance. You need the support of people. You need the prayers of people. You need people to join with you, to, to help you. You need people to cover you, to cover your family, to cover your children. You need, you need the covering of God. You need the umbrella of God over your calling. So the first thing is the communion of the saints. Get together with your company. We're starting small groups. You know, again, the new semester of small groups. Become a part of a small group. Become a part of one of these small groups. Those things, they will help you. Those small groups will help you to incubate your call, to activate your call. Get involved in, in one of them and begin to do life. And you begin to see that your calling will start getting activated. Let me go to point number two because of time. Point number two. Uh, I, I call point number two the culmination of service. I'm talking about the, point, the, the, the conditions for the activation of your call, the culmination of service. What do I mean by that, and where did I get that? Look at it in Acts chapter 13, again, uh, from, you know, starting from verse, that same verse 1. It says, you know, it said, in, now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. And then he went on to mention these prophets and teachers. Now listen, Paul, Paul or Saul, as was mentioned, there was one of these prophets and teachers. 
But we're going to see in a moment right now that God was going to speak, the Holy Spirit was going to speak and release Paul to the assignment that he had been truly called for, sorry, that he had called him for from the very beginning. In other words, Paul was a prophet and a teacher, but that was not the center. That was not the ultimate of his assignment. He was, just do, he was doing that in a season, and he was faithful at, his, at it. So what I mean by the culmination of service is this, that these people that were gathered in this place, they were not people, they were not doing anything. You know, I've met some people, they say, you know what, uh, what are you doing right now with God's call over your life? They say, you know what, all I'm just doing right now is that I'm just seeking the Lord. Because the Lord told me that I'm going to be an apostle to the nations. The Lord told me that I'm going to be a business mogul. I'm going to be the president of the United States. Oh, I'm going to be this great entertainer. I'm going to be this and that. But what are you doing right now? No, 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 I'm just seeking the Lord. I'm just waiting upon the Lord. I'm waiting upon the Lord, and then the Lord will, you know, as I wait upon the Lord, is going to move me into his calling for my life. You see, whenever I look at those people, I look at them and I say, wow, they are not wise. They don't understand the way God works. God never throws you into his call. No, 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 no. God prepares you. He, 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 he tests you into his call. He tests you into his call. It would be very wicked of God for God to take somebody who is untested, unprepared. You have never dealt with one person or two people. You've never dealt with any leadership crisis. You've never dealt with any situation in little. Then he now throws you into something bigger that, that is going to kill you. That would be unjust of God. I can't do that to my little kids. I can't tell them to go and do a particular thing. You know, I'm teaching my son how to drive. You know, when I was teaching him how to drive and, I, and I'm still, you know, still with him teaching him how to drive. I didn't first start by saying, go on the expressway and start driving. No, he was driving in the road in the neighborhood. Driving in the road on the neighborhood. Then later I said, let's go to the main road. And then we went to the main road. When I saw the way he was driving on the main road and all that, and then, okay, so, okay, now, let's go. Let's go to the highway. Then we went on the highway and said, okay, now, do on the highway. And then, you know, there are other kind of highways. So you have to watch. You have to watch how the person is acting, how the person is behaving, not because you don't like the person, but because you want to protect the person. When it comes to God, too, God is not going to dump you on the highway of your call. He's not going to dump you on, on the Ryan. He's not going to dump you on High 55 and just let you crash. No, God is going to try you by, drive, by you driving in your street. God is going to try you by you driving, you know, driving and, you know, learning to park in your neighborhood and doing all these things in your neighborhood. I want you to know, listen, that every moment, everything that you have, that you are doing right now is a test for what is to come. Everything you are doing right now is a test for what is to come. It's culminating in something. As Paul and Barnabas were, were faithful as, as, past, as, as prophets and teachers, God released them to the apostolic ministry. No, but he didn't just take them to the apostolic ministry first. They were faithful where they are. And so listen, I want to encourage everybody in this place that if you want to fulfill your call, to activate your call, you've got to get involved in service. No, no service, no service, no service is too little because every service is testing our character. Oh, there's nothing too little for me to do. I still do camera, I still sweep if I need to sweep, I still did this, I mean, to, you know, today, as I, you know, before I preached to you. It doesn't matter what it takes. The most important thing is that my heart is with God and I'm doing what God has told me to do. But some people, they withdraw from certain things. Oh, they say, that's too small for me. That's too little for me. I'm called to be a great apostle. I'm called to be a great businessman. I can't do that kind of deal. That, that's just a small deal for me. Listen, in the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 10 to 12, Jesus gave us a principle, which I call the principle of faithfulness. Luke chapter 16 from verse 10 to, to, to 12, it says, whoever can be trusted with very little, can also be trusted with much. But whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. And then he goes on to say, if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? You know that what Jesus was saying, if you are not trustworthy in little things, if you are not trustworthy in your finances, you are not trustworthy in your tithing, in your giving, you are not trustworthy in arranging your house, uh, arranging your wardrobe, keeping the things that he has given you, keeping it clean, keeping it well, if you are not faithful in the service that you have been given in the church, or serving the tech team, serving city praise, serving any one of these things, if you are not faithful, who is going to give you another assignment that is bigger than that? Because you are going to display the same attitude 
attitude. You are going to do the same thing because it is the same you that is handling little that is going to handle much. So God wants you. God is not going to promote you on a promissory note. Oh yeah, God, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start giving a billion if you give me some more money. Oh Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to really serve you with diligence if you can just allow me to have a bigger platform. No, you are going to have to prove it. You are going to have to show it in little that you are like that. You are going to have to handle little as if it is much. You are going to have to handle, you are going to have to handle what God gives you now as if that's all he's ever going to give you. You are going to have to handle those talents, that gift, those people that he has committed under your care. You are going to have to handle all the things that God has given you right now as if that's the only thing you will ever handle. And then that's what God will say, wow, this person has been faithful with a few talents. Now, let's give this person more talents. In Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 2, you know, God, Jesus speaking there says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the gardener. It goes on to verse 2. My father is the gardener. He said, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will even be more fruitful. So he's saying that the way God dresses us, the way God makes us advance in his call, the way God activates new horizons, new aspects of our calling, new, new assignment, the new things that he has in store for us, the things that he has prepared for us, is as we are faithful in little, he will cut things off us so that we can be, even become more fruitful. But if you are not fruitful now, then you cannot go on into the next thing. I want to encourage everybody watching me right now, the, one of the conditions for the fulfillment of your call, for the activation of your call, is be faithful where you are. Be faithful where you are. Don't always have your head in the cloud. Always thinking of when the next thing is going to come. That's not the way to walk. The next thing comes when you are ready for the next thing. When you are overqualified for the season that you are right now, there's nothing in this world that can stop you from moving to the next season. There's nothing that can stop you from moving in the next season. So be overqualified for now. Be, be the best at what you do right now. Put your best into what you do right now. Do it as if that's the, the only thing that you will ever do. And you will see how God is going to promote you to the next level just by doing that. So you don't have to worry about the future. What you need to do is to focus on seeking the kingdom of God and its righteousness now. And all these things will be added unto you. So the culmination of service is what one of the conditions in Acts chapter 13 that led to the activation of a new face of the call upon Paul and Barnabas. Now let's go to my point number three. Point number two, the concentration of seeking. The concentration of seeking. The concentration of seeking. Not only was the communion of the saints going on, fellowship, being planted in your, in your tribe, or you know, the combination of service, serving God what, in, where, in, the, in, the, in, in, in the place where God has put them, the revelation that they, have, that they had currently, now, they now began to seek God. They concentrated. They said, you know what? Let, let me seek God. Look at it. In the Acts chapter 13, verse 2. They said, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Before I get to the setting apart and the, you know, what the Holy Spirit said, look at what they were doing. They were ministering to the Lord and fasting. They were seeking the Lord and fasting. Anytime you see the word fasting, it has to do with concentration. In other words, they decided to let go of food, to let go of certain things so that they can concentrate on God. They can concentrate on God to seek him. And when you see worship there, ministering to God, it's talking about taking the attention of themselves and just keeping the attention on God who has called them. Listen, I want to tell you today that one of the conditions that you must have in your life so that your calling shall be, can be fulfilled and you can keep on moving from face to face in the activation of your calling is to live a life of worship. Is to live a life of worship. A, life of, a lifestyle of seeking God, not just intermittently, when there is something that happens that pushes you to do it, no, but to make it a lifestyle, to make worship and seeking God a lifestyle. You have to develop an ongoing relationship with, with God. Do, at certain times, God will prompt you to spend time with him, to concentrate more on him, you know, and then he can even gather the, you know, other people together to do it with you like it happened in this place, you know, to just go and spend some time, you know, to seek him together. But listen, we must make this a lifestyle. I want you to know that for you to hear the voice of God clearly concerning your call and to hear the voice of God, the direction of God concerning your call clearly as you move on, you must have clear channels. You must have clear channels. You know, many of us, we have clouded channels. 
We have clouded channels when it comes to hearing God. A lot of things have clouded the channels. And listen, no matter what has clouded the channel, I don't want you to feel condemned right now. You can always get back to clear channels. What you need to do to get back to clear channels is for you to begin to worship God, to, be, to begin to practice a life of praise, a life of worship, a life of concent concentrating on seeking God in his word. I love, you know, Jeremiah chapter 29 from verse 11 to 13. We quote it a lot. It was something written to the exiles, you know, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the exiles of Israel that were, they were carried away. So God was writing to them, Jeremiah 29, starting from verse 11. You know, we quote, we quote it a lot, uh, but there's something about it that we don't usually quote. He said, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and to give you a future. So God was saying that I have a plan for you. And listen, God is speaking to you right now, watching me, that he has a plan for you. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for the rest of your life. He has an assignment for your life. He has a calling for your life. There are certain things he has prepared for you, for you to do in this world, for you to experience in this world, for you to accomplish in this world. There, there's a calling and a purpose upon your life that God has put there, that it's grand, that is great, that is beautiful, that is fulfilling. He has it for you. It is plans to prosper you and plan not to harm you. He wants to give you a future and to give you a hope. I want you to declare it right now. I say, I know God has a great future for me. Declare it right now. I know God has the plan to give me a future and to give me a hope. In a, a, a translation says to bring you to your expected end, to bring you to your expected end. There's an expected end concerning your life, and God wants to get you to that expected end. God wants to take you into the ultimate fulfillment of his calling for your life. But listen, you got to activate it. Look at the next verse, which we don't really quote that much. The next verse, you know, verse 12, it says, Then you will call on me. You will come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. Verse 13. I will listen to you. Verse 13. Then you will seek me. And you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. So God says that you will, you will be able to walk in these plans that I have for you when you concentrate on me when you concentrate on seeking me, when you make your life a life of worship, a life of constantly asking, you know, a life of constantly seeking and saying, God, I want to walk in your purpose. I want your plan for me, your call in my life to be activated. You know, when you get into that attitude and you begin to do that and concentrate, God says that you begin to activate that calling, that great future that he has for you. So let's go to my point number four. Uh, the conditions for the activation of your call in Acts chapter 13. Point number four. The next thing is the call of the Spirit. The call of the Spirit. The call of the Spirit. You see, whenever, listen, whenever you position yourself, the first three are conditions. When you position yourself in the, your tribe where God has called you to be at a time, and then you begin to serve, you serve with what you know, with the knowledge that you have, with the skills that you have, you begin to do that. And then you begin to listen to his prompting to seek him to consecrate, to live a life of worship, to, 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 to seek his voice, to minister to him, uh, to do that. When you begin to do that, you will hear the voice of the Spirit because you will clear the channels. You will clear the channels. You know, your fellowship with the believers clears the channels. You know, your, 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 your service of God, you know, clears the channel. And your seeking of God in worship and praise and dedication to him clears the channel. So you will hear God's voice. So that's what happened to these guys. As they were doing that, then they heard the Holy Spirit say, look at it, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, while they were doing it, doing that process, while they were doing it, there was open heavens. The Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Look at it. The work to which I have called them. I have called them. Listen, these guys were already called. Remember Ananias, you know, last month we talked about Ananias going to Paul and telling him that God has called him, you know, to do certain things, right? And then, you know, God, you know, God has been working with him. Remember Barnabas? Barnabas was the one that went to get Paul and introduced him to the apostle. They've been doing different things together. He was the one that gave his land, gave his, you know, gave his houses and all that. They've been working with God together. They've been doing that. But God says that there's also, there's still more work ahead. 
there's still some things that I've called you into. Listen, I'm speaking to everybody listening to me right now. No matter what you have experienced in your life, good or bad, no matter how long you have served or how little you have served, no matter what has happened in your life so far, I want you to know that what is still ahead of you is greater. What is ahead of you is more. You know, what you have seen in your life is just a tiny drop compared to the mighty ocean of what God has in store for you. I want you to tell yourself and to tell those who are watching with you, if you have people watching with you, God is not through with me. God is not finished with me. Hey, I know that I fell down, but I can rise up again. You can rise up again because God is not finished with you. I know you have had some successes, but those successes are going to pale in comparison to the successes that are ahead of you. Yes, I know you failed before and you said, you know what? I think I'm failed. I don't think I want to do it anymore. I'm here to tell you that failure is not final. Failure is not final. That failure is not final. You can rise up from that failure and you can go on because the plans that he has for you, they are mighty. The plans he has for you, they are great. God is not through with you. He still has some work for you. He has some work for you in your family. He has some work for you in the city. He has some work for you in our generation. He has some work for you in the world. There's an assignment ahead of you. No matter what you are seeing right now, the impact you are seeing right now, I tell you there's greater impact that is coming. There's something great ahead of you. And God is calling you to it right now. Activate your call. Activate your call for the next level. Activate your call for the next level. The work to which I've called them. Listen, he uses the word they there. The work. In the English language, you know, there are two types of articles. There is the definite articles and the indefinite articles. The indefinite articles are a and hen. That means it's not specific. But when you say the boy or the chair, you are talking about specific. That's the definite article. They was used in this place. In other words, the work that God had for them was a specific one. It was not an ambiguous one. There's something specific that you are supposed to do. There's a problem that you are supposed to solve. It is very specific. Somebody is supposed to solve a problem in the entertainment and heart world. Somebody in the business world. Somebody in the church arena. Somebody in the media and distribution arena. Somebody in the education, science, and technology arena. Some inventions that God wants you to have. Some creation that God wants you to have. Some businesses that God wants to establish. Some people are going to solve it in the family arena. Some people are going to solve it in the government arena. Whichever arena or field or sphere that God has put you. I want you to know that there's a specific assignment for your life. There's a specific assignment for your life. And God wants to move you into that specific assignment. The call of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the master director. As we seek him, he will speak to you. Don't go by presumption without the direction of the Holy Spirit. Listen to his voice. You know, Jesus was speaking in John chapter 5 verse 30. This is God himself in the flesh. The son of God himself. In John chapter 5 verse 30, he said, I can do nothing on my own. By myself, I can do nothing. You know that we're not supposed to do things by ourselves. We're not supposed to do things by our own presumptions. We're not supposed to, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to conjure up, you know, the calling of God. You don't need to do that. God will let you know. God will let you know what he wants you to do when you fulfill, when all the other conditions that I've talked about are fulfilled. He judge, I judge only as I hear. And my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. Listen, this call is not about your ego. This call I'm talking about is not about you. It's not about your name being popular. No, this is not about you becoming somebody that everybody is bowing down to. This call is about God. You know, if you make it about yourself, you are going to do things that the Holy Spirit never inspired you to do. You are going to run when he didn't, he didn't tell you to run. You are going to speak when he didn't tell you to speak. And you are going to fall down flat on your face. But when you flow with God and you do what he tells you to do, sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you, stay, 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 stay in one spot. He will tell you, stay, 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 keep doing that thing. That's what you're supposed to do. No matter what any other person is doing. You're not supposed to go and start doing what somebody else is doing just because they are doing it. Sometimes he'll tell you time to move, 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 move. Then you're supposed to move. Even if everybody else is staying, you can't go by other people's clocks. You can't go by what somebody else is doing. You are going to have to go by the clock of the spirit. You're going to have to go by the direction of the spirit. You see, there are so many things I see people doing. I see my friends doing. I see my mentors doing. I see people doing. Even my protégés, I see them doing. But it's not all those things that I'm supposed to do. 
I'm supposed to be faithful in what he has told me to do. I'm supposed to stay with what he has faithful me to do. Yes, I get challenged by what people are doing, but that doesn't mean that I have to do what they are doing. What I need to do is to do what the Holy Ghost is telling me to do. For Paul and Barnabas, it was for them to move to the Gentiles, sir. to move to the Gentiles. For some other people, it was for them to stay at Antioch. I just want you to know right now that you've got to be able to flow with the clock of the Spirit. You've got to be able to flow with the Holy Spirit and listen to him. He's the director of the move of God. He's the director of the God show. You've got to position yourself in the place he wants you to be in the God show and be there. People might laugh at you. People might say it is too long. People might say, oh no, you're not going up. Oh, who knew that Joseph was going to become a prime minister from prison? Oh, when, you're, when you want to be a prime minister, aren't you supposed to be to start going first of all, you know, becoming a, you know, a senator, becoming a leader, you know, going step by step, and then, you know, you graduate into that. You no, know, but the way God did it, God says your own graduation to prime minister is not going to be through the hall of politics. It's going to be through slavery and also be through prison. But from prison, from the pit to Potiphar's house to prison, he became a prime minister. I want you to know that your journey is different from the journeys of everyone. Sometimes in the heights of the world, it might look as if you are going down, but you are going up in the heights of God, like it was in the days of Joseph. For some people, it might look like they are going up, but they are actually going down in the eyes of God. That's why you got to stay in your lane. You got to stay in your lane. You got to stay in the place where God has called you to stay. And stay there. He knows how to open all the doors. He knows how to create all those things. Don't try to force it. Don't muddy God's water, the God's water of your plant by trying to arrange it by yourself. Let it flow. Let it flow. And listen, you are talking to somebody who has seen God move, who has seen God open up opportunities oh, that I cannot imagine I couldn't have put together by myself, who has seen God create things that I couldn't have I imagined by myself by just staying where he tells me to stay and doing what he tells me to do. I'm faithful with what he has given and listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit for when he says it's time to do this and to obey to do it. Number five, my point number five, the consecration of separation. The consecration of separation. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which, to which I have called them. So listen, the first point I talked about was the communion of the saints. So you, you get, you create that condition of being in your tribe. The second uh, condition there, the second condition there is the culmination of service. The culmination of service. You start serving. You start serving. What your hand finds to do, do it diligently. You start serving. And then the third point is the concentration, concentration of seeking. You begin to seek God in prayer, in worship. And then uh, the, 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 the last one you know, that I talked about is the call of the Spirit. You listen to the things that God is telling you that the Holy Spirit is bringing to your heart. And then my point number five, the next point that I want to quickly talk about right now is the consecration of separation, the consecration of separation. Listen, when God, when the voice of the Spirit spoke to them, He spoke to them about being separated to the call. This is a condition for the activation of your call. You see, when you are called of God, you there are certain separation and restrictions that are required of you. There are legitimate things that other people can do that you cannot do. There are places that other people can go that you are not supposed to go. There are things that other people might be doing, good stuff, that you are not supposed to be doing because you are separated. He says separate them. Separate them from the pack. Separate them to the work which I have called them. Separate them. So there is a separation that is necessary. Listen, the call of God, listen, the voice. When God begins to speak to you, about your call, the Holy Spirit will start speaking to you about separation. He'll start telling you, you need to rearrange your relationships. You need to rearrange your time. You need to rearrange how you live your life. You need to cut off certain things. And you need to take on certain things. It will separate you to, to close out to yourself in prayer. Separate you from certain pursuits. Listen, when 
some, some, some people, they have the ability to do anything. In other words, whatever area you put them, they will succeed. Joseph was like that. It doesn't matter what area you put them, they, you know, you put them, whatever, they, they will succeed there. Paul, Paul would have succeeded as an entrepreneur. He did, you know, uh, what they call the tent making, you know, separately, he could have succeeded as a Pharisee, San Adrian, he could have succeeded, and he succeeded in it. But God separated him from all the possible areas of success and separated him to his call. I want you to listen to me as you are watching me right now. It is not everything that you can do very well that God is calling you to do as your call. There are certain things that, you know, you, you have it, right? You have it, you can use it, but that's not the centrality of your call. You have to find out, Lord, what are you separating me to? What are you separating me to? And that comes by the worship and interaction and this condition that I'm talking about. And then you will know what I'm separated to. I know it. I know my calling. I know what I'm supposed to separate to. I see what people are doing and all that, but I know this is what I'm supposed to focus on. This is my separation. And there are different things that God says, no, 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 that's not you. This is you. We've got to listen to the Holy Spirit to activate our call. So you do it. Hallelujah. Look at what Paul said. I love this verse. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. In John chapter 20, I read it. I tell it to myself. You know, I, you know it's just powerful. Look at it. In Acts chapter 20, verse 22 to 24, Paul was going to Jerusalem. He said, I'm now compelled by the Spirit. I'm going to Jerusalem. Not knowing what will happen to me there. I remember when we were going to South Africa, you know, some, some, you know uh, last year, and I got from different people, don't go. Don't go there. They are killing Nigerians. They are doing all that. Don't go in there. Of course, I listened to people, but I went, and I went to pray, and I searched my spirit. And the Spirit of God said, that's what I want you guys to do, because I have something that you guys need to do, some relationship to establish, some things to do in there that have to do with the future. I said, oh, I'm going. I had to say no to several people that were telling us not to go there. You know, some very dear people to me. I said, I'm going to go. He said, now, compared by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. People were begging him not to go. Verse 23, look at it. Verse 23. In verse 23, it says, I only know that in, I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit even is warning me that prison and hardship are facing me. But this is what I love, verse 24. Oh, I just love verse 24. He said, verse 24, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me, my only aim. In the transition, said, none of these things move me. I think it's the KJV. He said, none of these things move me. My only aim is to finish. Yeah, KJ, but none of these things move me. Neither count my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry that I've received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. In other words, I am separated to this call. I'm separated to this call, no matter what the cost, no matter what the loss, if there's any. I'm separated to this cause, to this call. If it leads me into losing this or losing that, or getting this or getting that, if others have this and I don't have it, it doesn't matter. I'm separated to this call. I'm separated to the calling of God, to the assignment of God. That is my focus. That is, my, that is what I live for. There is a separation that is required in fulfilling your call. Let me go to point number six and I have one more after this. The confirmation or the commissioning of the saints. We're talking about the conditions for, necessary for the activation of your call. The confirmation or the commissioning of the saints. It said, after they have fasted and prayed, the people that order the believers, they, they place their hands on them and send them off. Listen, I want to say this very quickly to you. Your calling is not in isolation. It has to be overseen. It has to be overseers over your call. None of us is called to be independent. We are called to be interdependent. You are going to need continual input. You are going to need continual challenge, continual prayers, continual course correction from others. So you can't say, you know, Paul the Apostle, Apostle Paul and Barnabas couldn't say, okay, yeah, now I've been sent for bye, 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 bye. No. You will see later, as, as we read on in the book of Acts, they came back to that same place and they reported what God had done in their lives. They submitted certain doctrines, certain things that they were having issues with regarding the Gentiles, you know, to the, to the body. You know, they, they came back to Jerusalem. They came back to Antioch. You know, there is a connection that you must maintain. You must maintain the covering of God in your calling so you don't isolate yourself. You must be under authority. 
you must be under submission. When you talk about ants being laid and people bowing down for ants to be laid on them, it's a sign of transfer and it's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of surrender. You cannot fulfill the call of God with pride. You cannot fulfill the call of God when you break protocol, when you break the heart out of God, when you break the ranks and all that. You cannot fulfill it. No, you have to stay submitted. You have to stay consecrated. You have to stay teachable. You have to be under authority. You cannot lead when you are not able to lead, when, you are not, when, when people are not able to lead you. You cannot lead others when you are not able to submit. When you cannot be told what to do, you have no right, moral right to tell any other person what to do. Even the devil and the angels, like I preached last week. So it's important for you to know that one of the conditions for filling your calling is that you must, learn, you must learn to walk in the body as a part of the body, supplying a part, a part to the body. You must learn to walk, you know, in submission. Look at, let's quickly look at um, Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm going to read a bunch there. You know, Ephesians chapter 4, starting from verse 3. You know, it said, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Now, that bond is necessary. So you must make effort. You know, sometimes some people will want to get you out of the flow. You know, one of, that's one of the things that, you know, that, uh, you know, one of the things that caused problems for David was that some women started clapping. Oh, yeah, you know, Saul has killed, you know, this amount, but David has killed 10,000, you know, and all that, and then it caused, began to cause some problems. Some people don't, just don't understand that. You know, they're going to get you, in, they will get some people into trouble because they begin to talk about you as if you are the greatest thing since life's bread. You are the one that's ever happened before. You know, things are going to enter your head and you start thinking that way but you, and you get into the same condemnation of the devil. You have to know that no matter what anybody is saying, sometimes I tell people, I say, you know, like Jesus would say, don't talk, to, don't talk about me that way because I'm, that's not my place. That's not who I am. No, I'm just a servant of God. I'm just this. I'm not a God. I'm not any one of those things. You have, you have to do that. Other people, otherwise, you find yourself in trouble. He said you've got to keep the bond of the spirit, you, the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Just as you were called. You were called. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 4. Just like you were called, there's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. Verse 5. Now, be, you know, continue. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, one Father of all, who is over all and through all and all in all. We are all connected together. Verse 7. Verse 7. But to each of us, grace has been given. As Christ apportioned it. So we are different graces, but we are connected. This is why he says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts unto his people. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lowest earthly regions. Verse 10. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill all things or to fill the whole universe. Verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, the pastors to e equip his people for the works of service that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach the unity of the faith in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. And verse 15, speaking the truth in love instead, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is the Christ. Verse 16 is my final verse in this place. Verse 16, from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So as each of us is doing our work, we're interconnected. We're doing that. You are, in a way, all find our place. That is where, that is our God's purpose for our life. God's call for our life is fully activated. My final point, my final point, the cooperation of the saints. The cooperation of the saints. The cooperation of the saints. I'm going to quickly repeat my first six points, and then I will finish up with my final point. So the first point is the congregation of the saints, or the communion of the saints. Make sure that you are part of a tribe for you to activate your call, to create a condition for the activation of your call. Number two is the culmination of service. Make sure that you are serving. You are putting yourself into service. You are doing what you can do with what he has given you right now, and you are faithful at it. And then number three is the concentration of seeking. You know, that was seek the Lord, 
minister to the Lord, make it a lifestyle. Number four is the call of the Spirit. Then you've got to listen to what God begins to prompt in your heart. The things that he's bringing to you, you write them down. You write the vision down. You make sure that it is clear to you. And then number five, no, 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 number five is the consecration of separation. You begin to separate yourself as the Spirit is living you. You begin to focus. You know, you begin to live a life different, a life of value. You begin to separate yourself into that call. And then the, the confirmation or the commissioning of the saint, you make sure that you allow other people to speak into your life, to pray for you. You stay connected with the body. You stay submitted. You don't become proud. You don't become, you, you, you don't cut yourself out. You know, you, you keep on doing it and walking in the order of God. And finally, the cooperation of the saint. Listen, if all the first six conditions were fulfilled and the last one is not fulfilled, the calling will still not be activated. If they did all that for Paul and Barnabas, but they didn't do this last thing, it's not go nothing is going to happen. Look at what happened in Acts chapter 13, verse 4 to 5. After they had laid hands on them, look at what happened. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Cilicia, Cilicia and sailed from there to Cyprus. They arrived at Salamis. They proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. What did they do? They actually stepped out and did it. They stepped out and did it. They were in the church at Antioch, but now they began to travel to nations, different nations, different nations. They cooperated with the call. And that's why I wanted to, to end with this. And simply I want to say that for you to feel your call, you have to act. You have to act. You have to act. And God says, it's time for you to do this. I preach a message called activate your go. I think that fits right into this place. You got to step out of your comfort zone. You get to step out of your, the place of your fear. You got to step into what God is telling you to do. You got to make sure you do it. That's how you activate your call. If Paul and Barnabas had not stepped out, all those things would not have happened that has happened through their ministry. So it's time for you to look in which area is God telling me to step out, to do something, to do something. It's time for you to obey God and to do it. That is how to activate your call. Oh, I hope today you have been blessed by the message of today. I hope right now you are activated in your spirit. You are ready to fulfill your call. I just want to pray for everybody watching me right now. Lord, I lift up everyone watching this message right now. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the activation of their calling, the activation of the next phase, the next step, the things that you have called them to do. I'm praying, Lord, for the right conditions to be in place for the activation of this call. I'm praying that they will find their tribe uh, or they will use their tribe. They will contribute in their tribe. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that they will consecrate themselves. They will concentrate on you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that they will cooperate with your spirit. They will hear your voice. They will hear you clearly. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ today, Lord, for the release of the callings of your people, that they will be separated, Lord, into the assignment that you have for them, so that your will can be fulfilled. In every sphere of influence, I prophesy, all over this city, in the name of Jesus, people have been activated. They have been activated into their call for the glory of the Lord, not for self aggrandizement but for the glory of the Lord and the expansion of the kingdom. Receive it right now. Receive clear direction. Receive clear positioning. Accurate positioning right now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy over you. In this month of September, you are activated. You are activated in a new way. You are stepping into sin two, act two of your activation. It's a new phase, it's a new beginning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Per adventure, you are watching me right now. And you are yet to take the first step of making the just Jesus the Lord of your life. This is a very good opportunity for you to do that. It's so easy. Jesus already died on the cross of Calvary. He died for you. And he's already calling you, calling you from your heart. So if you are hearing his voice right now, just yield to him. And just surrender yourself to him by telling him, Jesus, take me. Take me. I receive your life. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart and be my king. Be my Lord. And I can tell you that he, he will hear you and he will come into your heart. you begin a new journey. You'll be activated as a child of God and you can begin to walk in your own calling in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to do something very quickly as we end today. Today is the first Sunday of the month. So at the City Light Church in the first Sunday of every month, we have our communion Sunday. And listen, I just love it because the communion the communion of the saints is one of the factors for our activation. When we share 
together, the body of Christ, the, bo the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ, our fellowship together, something is transferred from one another. We might be separated by distance right now, but there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. Something is flowing all around, the corporate anointing. There's a flow all around from Christ that is in us and flowing to everybody for our activation for this month. And most also importantly, this is our protection. God, the blood of Jesus Christ is, our, is, is the blood of our protection. It's our Passover lamb. And no matter what is going on in the world, we are covered and we are protected from those things. So right now, as we partake of the communion, you know, come and take it, you and your children, everybody in your household, get it right now. You know, just get something together and let's take the communion together right now. And as we take it, I prophesy over you. I'll begin to prophesy over you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go, just go ahead and take the body right now in the name of Jesus. This is the body that was broken for us. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare and prophesy for everybody hearing me right now that because his body was broken for you, your body is not going to be broken. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you are protected from all evil. Your children are protected from all evil. You are covered in the name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come near your dwelling. No sickness, no plague in the world will come near you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will go from place to place protected and covered by God, by his angels. We activate angels over you right now in the name of Jesus. Now go ahead and take the, 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 the blood. In the name of Jesus. That blood is the New Testament. Jesus said, as long as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. Lord, we remember your, we remember your covenant right now. Your agreement with us. Your covenant, Lord, over our lives. Your covenant of provisions. Your covenant of protection. Your covenant of peace. Your covenant of prosperity. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We claim that right now over everybody watching me right now as we stand in agreement. Thank you because there's a flow right now of the New Testament realities. The New Testament privileges flowing all over. We are walking in it. Thank you, Lord, because everyone is covered old and young. Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ that by the time we're celebrating the next Sunday, the first Sunday of the month of October, every one of us will be here intact, celebrating. No evil shall befall us. Thank you, Father, for the blood. We plead it over every one of our fears, over all the children, over all the youth that are going back to school, that are back in school right now. We plead it over everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare, Lord, your perfect covering over us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I, mean, I don't know about you. I'm always excited when I take the communion. You know, it strengthens me spiritually, physically, and it fortifies me and protects me and my family. And it's protecting you right now. We're going to go right ahead and we're going to honor God with our tithes and offerings today. Excited. Hallelujah. This is one of the best parts of this service when we have the opportunity to give back, to give out of what God has blessed us with, to bless the Lord with it. So you, are, you see different ways that you can give there. As you give, I want you to give your tithe in obedience to God. Not because a man or a woman is telling you to do something, but as the Holy Ghost is speaking to you to do it. He already told us in his word that he will make all grace abound towards us so that we have all sufficiency in everything. And we can abound unto every good work when we honor him and when we give to him. When we honor him with our, with our substance, he said he will bless us. And it's what a privilege to be involved in what God is doing in the City Light Church, in the Light Development Center, what he's doing around the world, even through this ministry and what he's doing in our city. So right now, let's just give to the Lord and give it with joy, give it cheerfully and bless the Lord with it right now. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus because of the fulfillment of your promises in our lives as we give cheerfully and joyfully to the work that you are doing. Thank you for continuing to preserve us and to bless us financially and otherwise so that we can continue to be more fruitful. Thank you for pruning us financially so that we can be more fruitful for you. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So at this time, I just want to make that announcement again. Next week, we're going to be coming to you live into the service, you get more information about that, um, you know, during the week. So come join us, 824 East 43rd Street. Register, first of all, because there's a limited number of people that can come. And for those that are not yet, not yet able to join us, you'll be seeing us online. Don't forget Bible Master Class. Join us on Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Central, when we're going to be studying the Word of God systematically, uh, verse by verse, by verse, and chapter by chapter again. So... I want to say bye-bye, see you guys, and have a wonderful week. I'm going to hand it over to our host right now. God bless you. Oh, my goodness. What an amazing message awesome. on activating your call. Sister Joyce, what about that message truly inspired you? 
I loved and I needed the reminder of having to continually seek God in the activation of your call. It's not enough to just know your assignment. We need that intimacy. We need to continually seek him so he can guide us in this assignment. What about you? You know, I especially was motivated that part of activating my call is the congregation of the saints. That has to do with fellowship, support, accountability, and really serving God faithfully within the body of Christ. So it requires the congregation of the saints. That is how we activate our call. Absolutely. And speaking of the congregation of the saints, we invite you to come with us this Wednesday for our Bible Master Class at 730. We are on all social media platforms, and it is important to be plugged in so that you can go activated in your call. Also, next week, we are live. We are back, everyone. And we are looking forward to you joining us here in person for in-person fellowship and worship. Look out for details for more information about our in-person service next Sunday. You know, I just can't wait to see what God is doing, activating his call as we gather together in person. But also, we also welcome all who continue to worship with us virtually. You are still part of our congregation, and God will continue to activate his call in your life. Amen. Go and have a great week, an activated week in your call. And right now, we welcome back City Praise for our family song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Join us as we take the vision song. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I am a member of God's family. The money is in everything I do. I am a model of his character and grace. I'm an example of his love, faith, and life. I am a member of God's family. I live harmonious in everything I do. I am a model of his character and grace. I'm an example of his love, faith, and And every race, city lights train, train upon his words with youthful grace, city lights Holy Spirit filled and passionate. We're living, we're living our best. Hallelujah. 